All right, y'all know what time it is. Oh, God, let me sound the alarm. All right, y'all, so it is time for the Relationship 411 with Miss Coco Bowden. All right, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, it's time for the Relationship 411, y'all. All right, so let me cut that off, and, and let me just tell y'all something. I'm excited about the Relationship 411 because it's always going to be a time in your life at some point where you're just not going to be the priority. So our relationship 411 is what to do when you're not a priority. First of all, you don't know what to do until you realize um, what not being a priority looks like. Because sometimes, you know, we just think, we brush off a lot of things that people do to us as, you know, maybe they didn't have enough time or, or, um, something came up, but you know, you have to realize the difference between an option and a priority. Are you somebody's option today? Are you an option or a priority? Well, an option is whenever you can choose who you want to deal with. Who do you want to deal with is when you can choose who you want to deal with and have multiple partners and other partners and haves or associates, friends with benefits. It's when you can make that choice between who you want to spend the most time with. Unfortunately, that's what happens to a lot of women and guys. We don't recognize the signs until it's too late. And then we've invested a lot of emotions that have now turned to emotional baggage. And we have given up a lot of our time just to be with someone who is calling us an option, right? Okay, and then you have a priority. A priority means you, I really want you to be part of my life. I want you to be part of my life so bad. I want to tell you things that's going on in my life. I want to let you know how I'm doing. I want to show you that you are a priority in my life by taking you places, taking time to talk with you on the phone, taking the time to reply and respond back to your texts, taking the time to tell you how beautiful you are or how nice of a man you are, how well I think that, you know, you even wear your hair or clothes, you know. So that's that's some things that, you know, people don't never pay no attention to, but that's how you realize when you're a priority, when someone really treats you like a priority. And, you know, we have women now and men who are just settling for anything. And, I mean, settling to be last. And what ends up happening is you are so emotional destroyed that you don't even have the strength to say, I want out of this relationship. Especially if you're a newbie in it. You're a newbie in a relationship and you want to, you want to, you know, because in the beginning, first of all, in the beginning, relations start out where you're calling each other every day and you're, telling each other how wonderful you are. And then suddenly, somewhere along the line, you start feeling this dip. It becomes a dip in the relationship. And you're like, what did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? And you're questioning yourself and, and the things that you are doing. But the truth is that dip is actually natural in a relationship. The thing is, can your relationship survive the dip? Is it really a natural dip or is it a master manipulator? I mean, that's point blank. We have master manipulators out here who will not make you a priority, but you are an option for them. They're only going to call you when they're bored. They're only going to be around you when there's no one else they can be around. They're only going to talk to you basically when you are a benefit to them. If you're not a benefit to them, then whoever has the real eye, the real eye, listen, the real eye, that's who they will give the most of their time to. That's who they will give the most of their feelings and emotions to is the person who they really prioritize first. And if you're not that person, then that can hurt you to find out that, hey, I didn't give all this and just to find out that I'm not even a priority. So it's better late than never to wake up and realize whenever your option 
versus a priority. And some of the things you can look for is um, pay attention to if they're always late. If they're always late, you may not be in, you may not be a priority for them. Um, when someone is always late to meet you or even worse than that, when they stand you up, you're not a priority. Being timely is a sign of respect and being late means you're not important enough for your partner to prioritize your agreed meeting time. Take stock of when your partner arrives and then look at the bigger picture. Does a pattern emerge? You have to check and see if this is a pattern. Is this person always returning my calls late? Always? Is he always returning my texts late? I text you early in the morning and you just not texting back and it's like 12 at night. You know, so during that other time, what are they doing? They're doing with whatever um is more important to them. And sometimes it can be, now listen, though, put this out here. Let me put this out there. Sometimes it can be a real reason why that person is late or why they're not putting you first. It could be something going on in the home, um, something going on with their circumstances. But even then, you deserve a response. You deserve a response. So pay attention to that. Okay. The second thing is special occasions aren't special. And in other words, Valentine's Day is coming up, but they're just brushing it off like it's just another day. Special occasions should always matter. It's not about the gift. It's about the effort. And if there's not much effort on the part of your partner, it can show you that you're not a priority. Sorry, boo. Sorry, boo. And, you know, if, you know, this is some crazy stuff, you know, because sometimes we got couples been together for a long time. So when your partner forgets your anniversary, stops at a drugstore for flowers for your birthday on the way home and asks you what you want to do for Valentine's Day the morning of, chances are you're not a priority. They have basically put other things ahead of you. And it's not right. And yes, it feels bad. And yes, it may be your normal. It may be a normal for some of us women. I'm going to say the women mostly because it mostly happens to the women. We get used to being treated like this and think that that's love or that's a man working hard, taking care of the home. Well, listen, men know exactly when it is time to show up and show out. Men already know that. So if your man ain't doing that and they keep putting you last or keep saying work this, work that, they need to find a new job. (laughs) They need to find a new job if they got to keep putting you last. Because, you know, really God will take care of you. He will take care of you. It's not always in the job. Sometimes it's just in the man and we have to women up, woman up and realize that. Okay. The third thing is you feel single, even though you're not. And you know, that's a bad feeling. If you're alone more than not, and you know, your senses, your senses will kick in. You know, we talked about discernment last weekend, how it would kick in and let you know whenever it's over. Well, your relationship may be over if this person is making you feel like you're single. You'll never feel like you're single in a relationship. You should never feel like that whenever you're a priority. Whenever you you are someone's priority, they will never make you feel like you are single. Never. So if that's going on you and you know it deep in your gut, it may be a sign that it's just time for you to go and do some things for you. Because deep in your gut, you often have a lonely feeling as though you already been dumped, even though you're still in a relationship. And it's the worst feeling. I've been there. I've been there. I, I had a relationship like that, you know, and it was the worst ever. But it's very telling about where you are on your partner's list. And it does matter. And I want to tell you, ladies and men, you do matter. And the right person will value you enough to make you a priority and not an option. Okay, the next thing is they don't mind disappointing you. Y'all listen, they didn't got so used to disappointing you till it really is it's turning them on. It's giving them an ego boost to disappoint you. 
you know, and, and they lay it out pretty plain and simple. They don't hide nothing. They just text you. They send you lazy texts like, hey, what's up? They don't even try to fulfill the obligation in the relationship anymore. So whenever it comes down to, you know, just even being a responsible man or woman, they let you know off the gate, hey, I don't care if we do or not. That's you. Whatever it is, that's you. So if you let that person know that your feelings are hurt and they don't even apologize and then call you back right right away, next time they're showing you that they don't care if they disappoint you. And if they're willing to disappoint you, you're not a priority. Does that hit close to home for anybody where you have puffed and puffed and you laid on the chair pouting all day long waiting for a text to come or you sat around depressed waiting on that phone call and nothing or you sat around waiting for valentine's day to come and you got nothing (laughs) okay so they don't mind disappointing you that lets you know off the gate that you're not a priority and i've got one more thing here and the fifth thing is they don't put much effort into meeting your needs Mm. when you're a priority one thing that you need to know is that your partner cares about your needs and honestly wants to work to see that they're met a partner can't meet your needs all the time but there's a difference between someone working on their behavior because it's important to their partner and just temporarily um, just pretending like, you know, they've changed. You know, you'll know the difference. If a person isn't willing to put in consistent effort after you've spoken up, <laughs> you're not a priority. Your relationship is not a priority. And let me just add this too. If they don't make time for you, You know, you're not a priority because there's a big difference between not having time and not making time. If you don't have time, that means that you're doing something, uh, you know, even the busiest person. Let me just put it like this. Even the busiest person can make a little bit of time for their partner when their their partner matters to them. You know what I'm saying? So some things that you can do to help yourself out when you realize that you're not a priority anymore is to start being free. Be free to be who God made you to be. Instead of sitting around pouting and complaining and whining and, you know, sounding off in their ear all the time, this is what you got to do. Really, you got to go back to your freedom mode. You got to go back to your freedom mode because sometimes when we get locked in on people and we get fixed on one person, we become in bondage. Okay, so in order to become free again, you got to start doing the things that you love to do, the things that give you life. You got to start hanging around the people that you used to love to hang around before you met this person. You got to go back to some of your passions that you used to love to do before you met this person. You know how we give up stuff when we meet people? It's time to stop that. Don't do that. Instead, go back to the things that you love to do. The second thing is you got to make yourself a priority and your needs. You got to really... Look, if it's emotional needs that you need, you have to get back into your spiritual life more deeper. You have to start a relationship with God. And in other words, you have to build on that relationship with God for your strength, your joy and your peace, for your faith. All of that. You have to get back into your scriptures and hang around people who will help build your faith and not tear it down. Okay. You just have to make yourself a priority. That's all it is to it. And the only way you're going to be free is to know who God has called you to be and know that God has sent people around to set the captives free. Amen. So always be looking out for that person who's in your life that's really trying to tell you and give you direction and help along the way. All right. And the next thing is you got to recognize who your users are. Don't sit around and recognize who's against you. And yet you just sit there and continue to allow it. You can't do that. In other words, you got to recognize who is using you in your family. It may not be in a relationship 
as, such as a man and woman. It may be people in your family who don't put you as a priority and only come to you as an option. You know, it could be sisters, brothers, aunts, cousins who only come around when they need money. You got to recognize these people so that you can have your spiritual defense up. In other words, put on.